Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Back in 2015, Monica Carmen et al produced a paper titled A recent bottleneck in Y chromosome diversity coincides with a global change in culture which showed that thousands of years ago, there was a drastic drop in the relative number of males in the global population. Both scientists and independent researchers have looked into this, giving their own interpretations of the data, why it could have happened, including Antonio Zamora, who many of you know has long studied the Carolina Bays, proposing a hypothesis for their geomorphology that relates to the proposed Younger Dryas impact. On looking at the Y chromosome data, Zamora notes the peak in males coincides with the beginning of the Younger Dryas, but then we see a small dip and then a rapid decrease in numbers. Therefore, could the Younger Dryas have caused the Y chromosome bottleneck? The Y chromosome bottleneck requires a decrease in male genetic diversity, i.e. less males compared to females available to reproduce. This could be because of the selective killing of males, i.e. an historic culture of men predominantly fighting each other, or maybe from castration, or perhaps the jailing of males, preventing them from reproduction. 10,000 years ago there were 8 females to every male, increasing to 17 females for every male 7,000 years ago. Therefore, the amount of males that had to have died, that were castrated or jailed seems too high to be realistic, and it would have to be a global trend as well. Zamora found these explanations unlikely, and, in his research, he discovered that some scientists in Finland had found a temperature-related birth-sex ratio bias in historical Sami people. They found out that more males were born during warm years, and an increase of 1 degree Celsius during 2 years corresponded to approximately 1% more sons born annually. So, Zamora makes a logical assumption that if warm years bring forth more sons, a period of cold years may decrease the relative male population. Back in 2019, CNN reported that a recent study in Japan found a link between extreme stress and lower male-to-female sex ratio at birth. Interestingly, according to Dr. Miseo Fukuda, the conception of boys was especially vulnerable to external stress factors. For example, nine months after the Kobe earthquake of 1995, the Great East Japan Earthquake of 2011 and the Kumamoto Earthquake in 2016 respectively, the proportion of male babies born in these areas declined by between 6 and 14% compared to the previous year. That really is an enormous change, and the fact we see it after three different earthquakes, well, it can't be a coincidence. The data suggests that major stress does affect gestation, which, in turn, alters the newborn sex ratio. They go on to hypothesize that the major stress of major climate events might also affect the sex ratio, and it looks as though either Y-bearing sperm cells, male embryos and or male fetuses are more vulnerable to human stress. Scientists believe that the sex ratio is equal at conception, but more than half of all human conceptions die during gestation, and this results in a sex imbalance at birth. A mother's stress during pregnancy can affect whether the fetus survives. Ray Catalano, a professor in the School of Public Health at the University of California in Berkeley, said that male infants are a relatively frail organism, and for every society, for every year, the human being most likely to die prematurely is always a male infant, and that's true for every society the experts have the data for. It's believed that boys are biologically weaker, and they are more susceptible to diseases and premature death. Catalano also studied populations of Danes, Finns, Norwegians and Swedes between 1878 and 1914, 
and he discovered that colder years meant fewer males were born. But also, years of fewer males also meant hardier baby boys, boys that were less likely to die in infancy. So, it does appear to be right that external forces and stresses directly affect the proportion of males being born, but all the data shows it is quite sudden. It is a direct effect. So, let's go back to the historic Y chromosome graph. The younger driest cold phase was roughly from 12,800 to 11,600 years ago. That's over a thousand years of human reproduction through a turbulent cold phase of Earth history. The thing is, during this phase there was a small reduction in males as shown here, the younger Dryas doesn't mark the beginning of the dramatic drop in males, and it's certainly not the peak of the bottleneck. The drastic change started around 1,600 years after the end of the younger Dryas, at a time when the climate was actually getting better more and more. At this time, the Earth was even warmer than the peak of the Bolling Alarod. Catalano's work showed that the colder years between 1878 and 1914 did produce fewer males, but not fewer males hundreds or thousands of years after the cold. The impact is far more sudden. The studies showed that major stress affected gestation, and so, the cold temperatures during the Younger Dryas could certainly explain this slight reduction in males, but it surely can't account for the drastic drop 1,600 years after the end of the Younger Dryas. Furthermore, the lowest percentage of males compared to females was 5,000 years after the Younger Dryas, so this surely means the Younger Dryas was not a direct contributing factor. This is a different graph, and we can see that the gradual decrease in male diversity actually started around the end of the last glacial maximum, and this was when the Earth was starting to warm up. And the rapid decrease in male diversity actually happened after the Younger Dryas. Therefore, I can't see how the Younger Dryas could have driven any of the changes. During the Younger Dryas, population dynamics did change, People became more mobile in certain parts of the world, but, as stated, male diversity was already on the decrease long before the Younger Dryas, and also the rapid reduction actually started many centuries after. If you compare the climate data to Y chromosome graphs, it's probably a better argument that the new warmer global climate of the Holocene affected the Y chromosome. As we can see, a gradual temperature rise led to a gradual decrease in male diversity, and a rapid increase in temperature also corresponds to a rapid decrease in males. In the human story up to the Younger Dryas, low temperatures like those in the Younger Dryas were not uncommon. There had been numerous high to low temperature oscillations, or Dansgaard Erschke cycles, in the last ice age. They were actually very typical, and there were many climate changes just like the Younger Dryas. As stated, the Y chromosome bottleneck matches up perfectly with when global temperature reached a new stable high. This was extremely atypical for the Earth. Humanity was now living in a very different climate, a very different world, and so, in my opinion, it's actually more likely that the stress of a new hotter climate and the way it affected all aspects of human life, the cultural and social factors associated with it, were behind the changes in the human Y chromosome. The fact is, right now, we don't know why it happened, but the 100 or so scientists that accumulated the data believe the Y chromosome bottleneck was caused by cultural changes affecting variants of reproductive success amongst males. The Y chromosome drop comes around 10,000 years ago, which is a long time after the Younger Dryas, and coinciding with the spread of Neolithic culture, migrating humans, demographic changes, as well as major shifts in social behaviour, and changes in population structure. That's all we can say for sure. 
As I continue my studies, I'll keep this data in mind and if I find anything that can help to explain it further, I'll report it here on Ancient Architects. As always, I'd love to hear your comments, so please write them below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.